Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're doing an unboxing of Heroes of Normandy, Battle for Arcon. Uh, this is the uh, Battle Pack 2, I believe the first one for uh, for Battle uh, for Heroes of Normandy, Big Red One uh, edition, and the first one was, I believe, Bloody Omaha, and now this one, uh, Battle Pack 2. There's a Battle Pack 3, which we'll be covering on the channel as well. This covers Epsom, Charnwood, and Goodwood. This is a huge, uh, huge expansion, big, heavy, heavy expansion. Normally the uh, the battle packs come in little, uh, you know, about an inch, you know, about an inch thick, like an album size kind of thing, like a like a, a box set for an old album. But uh, but let's take a look in this one and see what you get inside. All right, well we have, as you take the plastic off, you get a sheet which tells you what's in it, and the back is very nice artwork. The sheet is what would normally be on the back of your box, telling you the, uh, telling you the contents. But we will save that, and we will dig into what's actually in the box. on the screen we can so the good thing is this is uh, solo friendly um, given the solo expansion if you have that for uh, the Heroes of Normandy game we've covered that on the channel too uh, you should be able to find that video um, on here so uh, check that out now the how the solo system works and so on and so forth so uh, uh, but but the way it's designed is it'll work with any of the Heroes of Normandy games so Let's dig on in here. So the first thing you get, Battle Pack 2 rules and scenarios. I love Bravo to Devil Pig for not making this a huge 12 by 12 rule book that is a nuisance to use. They, they made it on the standard A4 uh, paper. But let's see what it has in it here. We have, looks about 28 pages, full color, glossy. And starts on, you do have to own, this is an expansion, so you do have to own the base game to play this. But uh, we start out with the rules, uh, terrain effects. So it's kind of like the uh, the special rules for this, for these scenarios, I would assume. It's not it's not actually uh, you know, modifying, you still need the rule book and all that. So. so we have things like terrain effects for different things. We have terrain elements, craters, low barricades, difficult terrain, uh, rubble and river, rivers. We have modular buildings. Uh, half squares, uh, urban fighters, special abilities, uh, firing special abilities. You have destroyer, destruction, Hawkeye, tank hunter, uh, special defense abilities, unshakable, command special abilities, barrage order, improvisation, NCO, uh, and then more gear options. Got a character trait of fanatic, and then we have aircraft, artillery, battle plan, fortified initiative, and smoke. Scenarios we have let's see we have one that's a safari in Normandy, which is marked as one to two players. So it tells you that you can use it with the solo system, and all of these are actually marked one to two players. Uh, and then for the campaign, you got six six missions: trading blows, charge of the light brigade, beaver tails with sauerkraut, Zurich, Sharon the ferryman, and Operation Stack. So as you can see, it's full page. The rules only go through page eleven. And we started on page two, so there's the rules, and then we get into the scenarios. Uh, well, I guess we have the aviation rules here too. And then there's the scenario, Safari in Normandy. Oh, we've got some nice little uh, comic strip artwork here explaining some of the rules or just giving a little flavor. Uh, composition of the armies, preparation, victory conditions, solo mode, the AI may play either side, so it's telling you up front. They have now coded all their games to work with their solo system. So, very good news, indeed. All right, so it tells you how to set them up. So I'll let you look at those. And then, oh, well, cut a new scenario. This is a scenario card on cardstock. And this is the Creel. It says Battle Pack 2 is needed to play this scenario. So in case you combine everything, you know that you need to have Battle Pack 2. Uh, battlefield and deployment, composition of the armies. So we get a bonus scenario here in the box. 
That's pretty awesome. Preparation and victory conditions. And tells you how to set up solo mode. And then we've got our punch boards. So we have, I think it's nine. Consult my GG here. Yeah, we have nine double-sided punch boards and we have six double-sided terrain boards. So a lot of cardboard. That's why this is going to be so heavy. We'll pull it out. Let's see what we get here. All right. So we've got a Got a chimney. These are the modular buildings that they were talking about, I guess. We got some rubble, blast zones, some impassable water areas, and then passable water areas like shallow rivers. Got a wasp vehicle. Some roads with craters, as we mentioned. Pretty neat. And then number two here, or I guess that's number nine. We're going backwards. This is number eight. So again, we get the modular buildings. You see the building just kind of ends. So we'll punch that out. You can see we got the, we've got the walls here and then this one just ends. So then it will obviously connect like that and give you a building or it'll connect like that and give you a building. So it's a new, new innovative addition to the uh, Heroes of Normandy battlefield. This has been out for, I mean, the Heroes of Normandy system has been out for many years and they are constantly improving it. Put that back into place correctly. Uh, improving it and uh, innovating it. So that's pretty neat. So there's that one, go to the other side. Those buildings are like pretty destroyed. Tile seven, some more water. And we've got Emil Dur, the Death Joker. We've got a whoop, <laughs> look at that building. It's kind of neat. A little diagonal hallway to it. Uh, I got a new um, faction symbol there. The SS with a key through it. And then Fnatic, so you got the youth, the uh, German youth. Don't want to say the name of the, uh, the nutcase they were following, but uh, the German youth there. You got Feldkommando, Hauptsturmführer Haupts Karl Heinz Milius. And his his uh, leadership tile. We've got a tank, got a Panzer VI, Tiger, a bridge. So that's kind of neat, you can just place a bridge here over troubled water. Oops, and there's the sunken bridge. So the bridge gets destroyed. I guess you can flip it over. And now we've got some units. Here's more of that, uh, that uh, first battalion. Panzer Grenadier. Panzer, Panzer Fours, Panzer Ausf, and of course the back of the command dials, and the destroyed tanks. So it's sheet five, now sheet four. So there's some aircraft, artillery markers, Sergeant Lee Lo, tank leader. There's some British troops in this one. Got thousand pound bombs. Spitfires, they got their tiles on there, and then some more various, various water tiles. Go to the back. Oh, see the water tiles actually become streets with rubble. Some more tanks. There's some Shermans. The Royal Winnipeg Rifles. So we got some Canadian troops, all Commonwealth troops here. The Sexton, the Cromwell tank. Now, obviously, there's lots of little tokens and things like that that they fit things in. So, we've got some Vickers machine guns, six pounder anti tank guns, a Daimler AC, M5 Stewart. Sheet 
2, field command Colonel, Colonel J.E.G. Paul Mathieu, Canadian. And then we got the 214th Infantry Brigade Regiment. Got their nice lion crest here. Got some Bren platoons, some mechanized piets, some mechanized Brens. Got the commander tokens there. Some universal carriers and some half tracks. Just for continuity, through the back. And the last punch board we've got here. We've got High Command Brigadier General Miles Dempsey, 8th Infantry Brigade, 3rd Infantry Division. Luger Hood, Chimney Breaker, Jack Banks, who was a youngster. That's his claim to fame as he was a youngster. So, three inch mortars, flamers, there's Dempsey in the point, and Piet's leader teams, Brens, two inch mortars, etc. There's the hero tokens, and there's the back of that one. All right, so now we go to our terrain boards. Six of these, here's number six. We've got sewers, the tunnels, you can go through. Number six. Number five is ruin building. And I'm assuming there may be stuff where you uh, set up on top of these so then as the buildings can get destroyed you just take them off maybe. Or maybe they start out destroyed. As we know from our history is the way it was. Number four. A lot of ruination on these uh, base tiles. A little field here. Garden. B for victory. And number three. Again, the, the prevalence of ruined buildings here made me think that the, that the uh, modular buildings go on top of these and then get reused. Oh, and here we've got a bridge. And some murky water, like a harbor, something. That's tile three. Tile two. Another open river here. And this has like the guardrail of a bridge on the side, so it's probably going to connect together to another one, possibly. And tile one. Again, room buildings. And again, another guardrail, but no, no actual bridge. So, all right. So there are six tiles. We get two dice for the Commonwealth troops. They're in the brown color. And your collection here. We'll roll them. Of course, it doesn't matter because they're on the same side. We got double threes. And then we've got our order, your order blocks, as expected. And your dummies and your, and your actual orders. The Commonwealth. And then stickers, if you have the uh, World at War storage, they go ahead and give you the stickers to put on those boxes for the troops that are gonna go into those boxes. They're none of the storage boxes come with this game, but uh, but those go in like that. And this was, the lid was a little high on the bottom, but I think when you punch everything and, and sort it, it's gonna be, um, everything's gonna fit and the lid's gonna go back on tightly. It's just all these punch boards were stacked there where they can only have six really for the for the uh, maps and then the units will go underneath. And then finally we got a deck of order cards for the Commonwealth. We'll take a quick look at those. All right, so here, are, here they are. These are, um, they're smooth, they have a, you probably can't see it on video, but as I'm looking at them, you can see they have a um, kind of like a faux linen finish, but they're actually just very smooth. They're not linen. Kind of kind of thin. You'll probably want to sleeve those if you use them a lot. If not, they're easier to shuffle if you don't sleeve them. So anyway, so like burst into action. There's uh, four of these. It tells you the bottom one of four, two of four, three of four. So 
First in action, play before activating, activating one of your units. During this activation, your unit gains the fire on the move special ability. So these are nice little things that mix up the balance of just having what's on the counters and what, what they can do. You can play these cards to, to really mix things up against your opponent or, again, the AI. So you get, uh, looks like a deck of 50 of these border cards for the Commonwealth Army. So if you pick up a copy of Battle Pack 2, Heroes of World War II, Battle for Cain, uh, Battle Pack 2 from Epson, Turnwood, and Goodwood, you are going to get that deck of Commonwealth War Cards, as we discussed. You're going to get the pack of uh, order tokens. You're going to get a sheet of stickers for the storage system with all sorts of units. Two dice for the Commonwealth in the brown. Six terrain boards. EC1 through EC6 A and B, they're, they're double-sided, as we saw. And you're gonna get nine massive uh, punch boards of tokens to supplement your collection of units. An extra bonus scenario, and a 28-page rule book with the scenarios in there as well, with six scenarios, a campaign, and a single scenario. And that is everything that comes in Battle Pack 2. Heroes of Normandy, Battle for Kine, Epsom, Charnwood, and Goodwood from Devil Pig Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!